Okay, let's start this video with some common sense and everyday life. So when you talk about volume, two words that shows up everywhere. The first word is disk. The second word is washer. Later on, we have a word called shell. So what is a disk? What is a washer? What is the difference between them? So what is a disk? This think about a plate. So what a plate is a solid circle without a hole in the center. So let's say you are trying to cook some dinner tonight. What do you want to eat? Fried rice, sp spaghetti, hamburger. So after you finish your cooking, you are going to put the food on a plate, right? You are going to put the food on a plate. So what, what is the plate look like? Do you want a circle in the middle of the plate? No, right? So a plate is like an, an object a circle, solid circle without any holes in the middle. So look at my picture. So I have a solid circle. There is no hole in the middle. That is called a disc. For this, think about a plate, okay? A utensil you use in your everyday life. What about a washer? So when I mentioned the word washer, most people will think about washing machine immediately. Yes, that is okay. You can think about washing machine. But if you look up the definition of washers online, the word washer has a second definition. That is a metal ring. So that's when I talk about washer, think about a ring. So what is a ring look like? A ring is a solid circle with a hole in the center. So I will just think about a metal ring. Don't think about washing machine. Think about a metal ring. A metal ring is the second definition of the word washer. All right, so disc, a plate, a solid circle, no hole in the middle. Washer, think about a ring. You have a circle, but there is a hole in the middle. All right, so since this uh, lesson is about volume, let's talk about some methods. So the first method that I would like to discuss is the disk method. So volume by disk method, there are two types. So this video, we will do type one. Type one is horizontal revolution axis, and we are using a dx integral. So the revolution axis is horizontal. So what does that mean? Best way to explain that is using an example. So let's say I want to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating about the x-axis, the region under the curve, y equals to zero and y equals to square root of x from x equals to zero to x equals to one. When you do a volume problem, draw a picture, sketch the graph, make sure your picture is nice, big and clear. Okay. If you use a tiny picture, you will just mess up your messing up with yourself. Okay. You will just end up confusing yourself. Make sure the big picture is clear, nice and big. All right, so I have x axis, y axis, and then uh, the square root of x, I use blue. So do you see the blue curve right there? So that is the square root of x. And then y equals to zero. What is y equals to zero look like? y equals to zero. Look at the pink line. So y equals to zero lines up perfectly with the x axis. In fact, y equals to zero is x axis. Do you see there is a box underneath? x axis is y equals to zero. y axis is x equals to zero. When you handle a volume problem, you need to deal with this all the time. So why don't you take us a minute? Write this down. x axis is y equals to zero. y axis is x equals to zero. Okay, and then we have to rotate about the x-axis. You have never done this before, right? So what, where is the rotation? Do you see that there is a red arrow? Do you see that? On the left-hand side, there is a red arrow. So rotate about the x-axis. That means, first, first of all, you have the square root of x. You have y equals to zero. And then the area is bounded by these two curves. And then x goes from zero to one. Do you still remember the area between curves? The area under the curve is bounded by the square root of x, y equals to zero, and then the lower cutoff is zero, the upper cutoff is one. So we have a region right there. What is rotating about the x-axis? So you have a two-dimensional area. Rotate about the x-axis means you are going to spin, spin about the x-axis. So now picture this, you have an area, two dimensional. Just think about a piece of paper 
and then you spin this piece of paper 360 degree what is the result going to be the result is a three-dimensional objects which is on the right so let's do this one more time you have a two-dimensional area two-dimensional object a piece of paper two-dimensional area what area of what area between curves between the square root of x and y equals to zero ready two-dimensional you have a piece of paper now spin that piece of paper 360 degree is the result 2d or 3d the result is three-dimensional look to the right so the result is a three-dimensional object after you spin the area to 360 degree so the area in an, in in other words do you see there is a purple rectangle the purple rectangle works like the radius of the three-dimensional object just simply picture this in your mind starting with a 2d object and then you spin that 360 degree so the 2d object the the distance between the top curve and the bottom curve is the area so sorry, sorry it's not the area it's the radius of the three-dimensional object so back to the area look at the um uh, the orange handwriting so the two-dimensional area we use the top curve minus the bottom curve which is square root of x minus zero and i want to emphasize that square root of x means y equals to square root of x minus y equals to zero see that right here do you see that 2d area we use the top curve minus the bottom curve square root of x minus zero so that gives you the area only when you spin this area 360 degrees so this piece of paper is actually the radius of the three-dimensional object so when you find the area of the three-dimensional object we have to use a formula that we learned in the past the area of a circle pi r square so pi r square is the radius is the area of a circle right r is the radius pi r square that's how you find the area of a circle but how do you make this area becomes three-dimensional then you have to use an integral so the volume is equals to integral x goes from zero to one pi r square and then the the radius is the top curve minus the bottom curve think about this top curve minus the bottom curve you have a square root of x minus zero you have an area how do you spin how do you how do you represent the spinning spin 360 degree you will have to say pi r square what about the from zero to one okay so if you do a pi r square it looks like you have one piece of paper you have one piece of rectangle you spin that 360 degree right but we have a three-dimensional you have to cover the entire area from zero to one how do you cover the entire area so to answer this how question we have to set up an integral from zero to one so when you look at the integral from zero to one that covers the entire area from zero to one and then pi r square is one rectangle when you go from zero to one the one rectangle becomes the entire area from zero to one that um the area between the blue cu blue curve and y equals to zero so that is how you find the volume of that 3d object okay so uh this is only one simple example in the next video i will show you two more example regarding this type of um this method so this is only type one we still have a type two and that is the end of this video if you think my instruction is helpful let me know in the comment below like the video share the video for me subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so i will see you all in the next one thank you for your support and help signing out for now